Welcome back everybody, this is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. And today we got another gun gripe episode for you. Now, I've got a special guest with me today Don't who is it. not a douchebag, by the way. Thank His you. name is Mr. John Lovell, the warrior poet himself. <laughs> Means a lot, man. He's here hanging out. Right now, and there's again, I repeat, he is not a douchebag. Fantastic. Right now, there's a bunch of dudes like, nope, oh, I already decided he was. He's the worst. And so, <laughs> I don't know what it is. So, uh, you know, so when you were on our channel before, you yeah. ended up getting some subs. If people come over to check you out, yeah. And then they trolled you. Dude, tr man, yeah, we got a, a different group of trolls that we didn't have before so it's like Good. why does everyone call me that word what, what did i do like that doesn't happen on my channel i'm now now you gave me all the people that like to call people that and so i'm like fantastic of like guys make sure you go over there and, and subscribe to his channel and please don't be a troll he's a good guy okay he's not what everybody says he well, is. now it looks like i told dad and he's coming down and protecting me now now i look like the y'all better subscribe to john lovell i'm gonna turn this car around right now all right <laughs> that's good so call. <laughs> i think that's a really nice way to segue into the topic of our video we're gonna be talking about toxic masculinity and um i guess this is a warrior poet you know i guess this is a what do you call it um what do they what do they call that what's the word i'm looking for i don't know but I'm rooting, I don't know what I'm, I'm looking for. for you. I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Bruce Lee. What was his thing? Philosophy. Oh, philosophy. This is philosophy. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna get in philosophical here in this particular video, guys. So you know, the media and and all these folks keep throwing around this whole toxic masculinity thing. What what does that even mean? What is toxic masculinity? And I think that you know, this is my take on it. I, I think sure. what people are getting at with that, you look at like old school America. When I think toxic masculinity, well, there's no such thing as toxic masculinity in my mind, but people, they, it's like being manly is just not cool for people anymore or for some folks, you know? And I mean, does this get into, into the territory of chivalry where, you know, what, because you hold a door open for somebody, you're all of a sudden, oh, I can do it myself. I don't need a man to help me. You know what I mean? Like that whole toxic masculinity thing gets thrown around. And I believe that People, it's, 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 it's downright cruel. I mean, think about yeah. the people we sent to World War II to fight the Nazis. Oh, they'd be right? so embarrassed to let, yeah, well, I guess they're seeing our culture. Now, man, everything's upside down and backwards. And so even the term toxic masculinity sounds weird. It seems like there's, there's nothing so American right now as being anti-American. And that's just lunacy to me as well. And now men and women and the you know, we have gender dysphoria, weird stuff where we can't figure out what bathroom to use. And uh, the, the term of to toxic, toxic masculinity, like we're against men just being men. Like that, that's a bad thing of like, don't you want somebody to protect and strong men to be able to carry heavy burdens? And I don't think so. I think it's just what we want is really uh, feminized versions of men, not, not, you know, men can't just be masculine anymore, and all those distinctions, there's there's just a war on words against that. And uh, frankly, I mean, just part of it, I get bored and lazy to even confront it, uh, right? I was kind of like, ah, oh, this again? Uh, we'll, we'll get it out of our system as soon as, you know, some war comes to our shores or when it's time to defend or something of like, no woman anywhere ever would cry about toxic masculinity during a home invasion. They're like, go be toxic! Go be very, very toxic! <laughs> and then I'll whine about you as soon as you stack some bodies for in defending me. So um, yeah. anyway, I, I think... Uh, That's a wonderful point. That's a very wonderful point. And I, I think that a lot of it also comes from the fact that society as a whole, it just seems, is way, 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 way too comfortable. You know, I think that in a long, long time in this country, we haven't really seen a situation where people have truly been super uncomfortable. And when we think of comfort versus like, let's just say 100 years ago versus comfort now, when people think comfort now, they think, oh, I've got my cell phone with all my Facebook updates and my status updates for Instagram, and I've got my YouTube videos to watch, and I get to watch John Lovell, I get to watch Eric and Chad, and, and the world's happy. I get to go to work, do my thing, cook my meals, hang out with my family, play with my dog, and turn, hit a light and the power's on, hit a switch and the house is warm, hit another switch, the house is cold. There's all these comforts and modern amenities that we have. We don't know what it's truly like to suffer and to go without. 
And I agree, there's going to be a time when people are going to be like, yes, ple please, John, go be toxic, please. You're going to need people like me and John to be toxic yeah. at some point. And I hope that it's not in my lifetime, and I hope we never see uh, a truly bad situation as a country. But I think that uh, it's also worth mentioning, I think, personally, um, that we are in a very unique society in this country I think that women tend to have the misconception, and I think this whole toxic masculinity thing is a, is a very, let's just say pro-feminism thing. Like a lot of feminists are like, toxic masculinity, you know, we don't need men. Mm -hmm. I get that. I think it's worth mentioning that there are a ton of strong women in this country. The United States has created more strong, wonderful women who are capable of doing so many awesome things. And it's celebrated. We just yeah. don't celebrate strong men. Right, but but the point I'm making is that, I mean, like my wife works her butt off yeah. for this channel. Your wife works her butt off to support what you do. We have every, every strong man, every toxically strong man has an equally toxic strong woman. Toxic. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Don't call my wife toxic. No, it's good. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. I mean, but, but if, if, yeah. if I'm a toxic man, then I guess my wife is toxic too. There are very many strong women. And, you know, I don't think anybody's ever trying to say, oh, men are the only ones that are capable of doing these hard things that, we, that we've set out to do in our lives, right? Women do, you know, do some awesome things. There's some amazing strong women in this world. And we're certainly not, you know, we're not making this video under the guise of, a, oh, well, we're, we're you know, pro-manly pro only that and women can't mm -hmm. be strong too. There's plenty of strong women, but... Society just has this misconception yeah, about and it. And I don't even know? like the term toxic masculinity. I'd like to just replace toxic masculinity and femininity with toxic humanity. Of like, hey, don't be a sucky person. And here's here's kind of how I see masculinity. Of like, man, there's, there should be rough edges on a man that are certainly ready to protect. And that can be the nation in general, the family at a minimum of like, that, that's an important thing. Granted that the world is a dangerous place. And one thing historians universally will tell you is the world has always and is presently at war, always. It's a modern luxury as we hide behind the borders of uh, the world's greatest superpower, the United States of America right now, that we, we get so used to our comfort and security that we can look around in like a dreamlike sleep and be like, you know what? The world really is nice and cozy with, you know, butterflies and all as well. And I'm like, man, world's super dangerous place. I've lived, you know, uh, my, a number of years overseas and places ending in Stan and deserts uh, galore and uh, different places in Central America. I I've lived overseas and you can see their court systems. You can see, you know, uh, I mean, just people walking around with guns and uh, not, not that guns are bad. You, you, you just see the rule of law is broken down in many, many parts of the world. And just the world is a dangerous place. Absolutely. Uh, and, and so the United States is kind of like you can get so used to living in the, this bubble. Uh, the United States is an extremely safe place to say, uh, to live. If you disagree, I have an entirely different set of statistics that are verifiable that you have not seen. You haven't seen. The United States is an incredibly safe place to live. Uh, it, it compared to other places. But w getting back to masculinity of like, hey, there's rough sides and that's a good thing because the same guy who's ready to protect their family and go to war for a country, it, it, it should also have a, a, a gentle, sweet side as I'm hugging my boys and reading to them and snuggling and I'm compassionate with the uh, with people and I'm loving the misses and I'm being romantic and th that's just masculinity. It, it, it's soft and it's strong. It, it, it's both. That's masculinity. It, it, so do away with this toxic business, blah, blah, blah. No, it's just being a crappy person. Hey, there's a time to be real sweet, kind, and compassionate. And there's a time to be very, very fierce. And I think that's just basically being loving. I mean, to, to stand by and, you know, allow someone else to be beaten in front of you uh, and as you just don't come to their rescue with ferocity, I think that'd be a very evil thing to do. 
And, and uh, you know, and it's also a, a, as you're laying down violence on this person, that, it, you know, the, the reciprocal action there, of, that is a sweet thing and a soft thing that you're doing on behalf of someone else. Uh, we, we're a values-based community, warrior, poet, society, because we're really trying to embody both of that, of warrior and poet. We're, we're lovers and fighters, and that, that should, that's basically just masculinity. Uh, and femininity. It's just good humanity. Uh, but uh, anyway. Well th spoken. This really is a gripe. Sorry, it I is. kind of went on a No, no. I, no, it was completely fine. That's what these videos are for. Chad okay. and I often go way outside the wheelhouse. And I totally agree with everything that John said. And I think that, you know, people tend to really just sort of, you know... I think have selfish intentions when it comes to the way they look at the rest of the world. They think that their way is the only way whereby when you look at the whole warrior poet attitude and, and everything that John just said, it, you know, we're not saying that, you know, to be this mas this super masculine dude that you, you can't write poetry or play an instrument. I mean, I play guitar. I've been playing guitar longer I've been shooting guns. You know, uh, hell, Chad's an artist. He, he can draw and paint better than anybody you would ever see. And so I think that, I think it is natural for guys to want to just embrace an artistic side. I know lots of folks take up uh, things such as like fishing and hunting, and, and that's a way for them to just sort of, you know, embrace the world around them and get out and have fun and get and be with other people and everything. So I think that all those things go hand in hand. I, I totally agree with that concept, and I feel like I've, I've definitely lived that way my entire life. I've never really known anything different. All I know is I love my family and I do what I can to take care of them. I've never let anybody hurt my friends and family. And I like to uh, have artistic uh, outlet as well in everything that I do. And that includes, you know, playing instruments. I mean, like, like I said, in Chad's case, he paints and draws. So it, it's like it's a rift that's being driven into society where, you know, I think that people just need to acknowledge that strength in people in general is what we look for. And that, that strength can come in a lot of different forms. I mean, think about the lady in a hospital who's a nurse, and she has to see a bunch of messed up crap every single day. She sees hurt people every single day. That's all she does. She's a person that deals with people bleeding, dying. People die every day in front of her, and she has to deal with that. That's a completely different set of courage, but it's still courage. Courage comes in a lot of different forms. And doing the, the honorable thing by all of your peers comes in a lot of different forms. So to say that, you know, that, that masculinity is just this thing that is so horrible and that, oh, all these men are just a bunch of Neanderthals, I guess that's sort of the idea behind toxic masculinity. We're all a bunch of Neanderthals and we can't do anything. I think that if you look at the broader picture, you'll see that there are a lot of strong people in our society that are all capable of amazing things if just given the opportunity. And they all have their specific purpose in life that they do. They find their calling and they chase their calling. And me, I view that as being a person's strength, is when they find that calling and they embrace it and they, they run with it and they, they do what makes them happy and they do what keeps their family safe. And I don't see a thing wrong with that. No, me neither. I don't, I don't understand what it's all about, but that's toxic masculinity in a nutshell, and that's, uh, that's our opinion, and you can take it or leave it. And again, I will say, John is not a douchebag. So hey. <laughs> if you decide, you know, definitely go over there and subscribe to John Lovell's channel, Warrior Poet. He is a great dude, and he's got a lot of great stuff to talk about well beyond what we covered in this video. He does great training classes. If that's something you guys want to look into, make sure you check him out. He's a great dude, and we love having him uh, down on our channel. And uh, make sure you go over there and troll him a little bit. Tell him I said hello if you if you happen to subscribe well, to his channel. You encourage him to. They're yeah. just going to pull forth all the stops. You'll be like, let me, let me at him. You, you know what every comment's going to say now. I know. It's okay. Actually, uh, trollery drives engagement, and it's... Uh, it is helpful. Whatever. In smaller doses. Don't, well, let me help him out. And he'll be like, screw you, level. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, thanks for watching today's video. We hope you had fun and enjoyed, enjoyed what we had to say. Maybe we changed your mind. Uh, maybe you disagree with us. If you do, let us know in the uh, you know, comment section down below. We'll be sure to fire off some messages back and forth. If you don't agree, that's okay. It's okay to, to not agree. Uh, thank you for watching today. John, thanks for coming down. Yeah, man. All right, Fun pal. Stuff. How about a hug? Oh, come, come on. Come all right, man. <laughs> we'll see you guys. See, men can hug. And we'll have, have a great day. We'll see you next time. It was lovely. It was. It was John lovely. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> <laughs>